Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, I would like to thank Rishad uh, for including me uh, uh, you know, as a part of his IC. So I'm going to be talking about corneal customization before and after cataract surgery and how do we achieve the best outcomes. So uh, cataract surgery after refractive surgery is going to come uh, as a role in all of our practice. And uh, oh. okay. so uh, we do know that nowadays we do start getting patients who come up with, uh, who've developed cataract and who've had a history of refractive surgery in the past. Now, as these patients have had a uh, refractive surgery in the past and they have been spectacle independent, their demand after cataract surgery also is that they want to be spectacle independent after cataract surgery also. Now, we do have a lot of options uh, of good IOL power cal uh, calculators, the best of IOLs, and uh, of course, surgeon, exp surgeon in the clinical experience. However, you cannot ignore the cases uh, which you see here. The center one, what you see is a well-centered topography. But if you come across this kind of a patient who is a uh, post lasik surgery, you can see it's uh, grossly decentered. And in the pupillary area only, you can see a catrometry difference of uh, uh, more than around uh, five to six diapters. So these are the patients who are probably going to be unhappy after cataract surgery as well. And the, if you have a regular cornea, the refractive error, uh, the IL biometry is not going to be a challenge, but otherwise, yes. And if the patients have a decentered topography or a decentered ablation, they're going to have a lot more uh, higher aberrations on the cornea. Uh, higher HORMS, coma, spherical aberrations. And if you do a, cat a cataract surgery on these patients, they are going to be unhappy after surgery with the quantity of vision, quality of vision, and that's going to impact the quality of life also. So if it's a well-centered topography like what you see here, it's not a problem. But if you see something like this and you go ahead and do a refractive, uh, sorry, cataract surgery, then the challenge comes. And the challenge doesn't only come in uh, the post-surgery outcomes, but it also comes when you're dealing with, uh, for the IL power calculation as well. Because it can probably affect your uh, accuracy of IL power calculation and also reduces, uh, there will be refractive uh, error, uh, refractive error surprise as well. So of course, uh, Matthew sir would be a better person to talk about this because uh, when, uh, We've all learned that how uh, they, they worked on this uh, technique called corneal customization before cataract surgery, which is known as C3, where they do cataract surgery and then uh, proceed with the, sorry, where they, where they first regularize the surface for this irregular corneas and then they proceed with the cataract surgery. Now, why this is this, they do it because if you do a, a cataract surgery before regularizing the surface, post surgery, there is going to be a refractive surgery refractive surprise and there is going to be a poor quality of vision and then after that if you do uh, a corneal regularization then there you can have a refractive surprise so it's always ideal that you do a, re a re surface regularization first and then do a cataract surgery because whatever refractive error is induced be because of the regularization you can compensate for it with your IL uh, power or IL biometry during the uh, cataract surgery. So this is the nomogram what we follow. This is a published work uh, where we have uh, I like made a simple nomogram of how you can proceed in your clinic. If you do straight away go with a cataract surgery or if uh, when do you do a corneal regularization first and then proceed with the cataract surgery. So let's look at this two case examples. This was a 50 year, 58 year old unhappy patient. Uh, she had a history of PRK 20 years back and this was his refractive uh, error. Uh, she did come with cataract, but what history she gave was that she has she has been seeing persistent starbursts since the time of his ref her refractive surgery. So this is a case where she doesn't have a poor quality of vision because of uh, her cataract uh, or development of cataract, but her quality of vision has been poor since the time of refractive surgery. The history taking here is very important that since when the quality of vision is bad, and uh, when you do a detailed evaluation, you do come across uh, this topography. And here what you see, this refractive error might not be because of completely because of the cataract, but it can be because of the decentered ablation. This is a classic example of decentered ablation, and this could have led to starburst after surgery. So now she has developed cataract, but if you proceed with a cataract surgery directly, she's still going to have starburst after surgery, even if she's emetro. So you can, uh, you can choose any machine you want, but you need to do a topo guided treatment in these patients. So you can do it either on Wavelight or your Schwint Amaris or any machine who has a uh, combined topo guided tool. 
So you do scans, export the good quality scans, and you set the Q value within the normal range. Then you reset the refraction to zero and check for C4, C12 compensation. Uh, once you have compensated for the C4 and C12, you add the myopia with Q range being uh, zero. And then you balance for the difference of myopic and hyperopic ablation for the refractive error correction. So to consider for the treatment and choose the treatment with minimal ablation. So this is what probably uh, you would uh, do for regularization of surface. And this is also uh, uh, told here in chart that what stepwise you do, set the Q value to zero, uh, Q will lead to induction of SA, set the refraction to zero and check for C4, C12, compensate for C4, C12, add myopia. Once the C4, C12 are uh, norm equal, then you can choose the treatment with minimal ablation. And this is what the decentered ablation looked like. And this was the EKR map. You can see that there is a peak. However, there is a huge flat zone present here as well. But after the regularization, the, uh, the P you can do see a peak here. And the toricity and the keratometries have come well within normal limit. Now, the question here it's going to come is that if you have done a corneal regularization, but when to do a cataract surgery? So uh, you do a clinical topographical assessment. You check for the stability of topography. Once the topography is stable, at least two time points where your topography has been stable for four weeks minimum between the two time points. Once you see that, you can go ahead and plan a cataract surgery. And uh, you can use one of this. Of course, all the previous speakers have beautifully spoken about what calculators to use and how. So that is what you do here. And you can see this was the quality of vision of patient with before the TCAT, before the regularization. This is after the regularization and still there was a lenticular aberration present. So that is why her quality of vision was poor. But once you do the uh, um, cataract surgery, this is what uh, happens. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Pooja, for a very nice talk. Uh, any preferred technique of... Uh, doing the corneal customization? So uh, it depends, that, again, the history that comes into play, whether you have, they have undergone a LASIK surgery or whether they have undergone a PRK. A lot of these patients who are coming here have either undergone RKs or PRKs. So there you will opt for a surface regularization. But if they have a history of LASIK surgery, if you have an OCP where you can see the flap margins, if the flap are even and they're not very irregular, you can always go for a flap lift as well. But history is very important. You have to have your OCTs into hand to decide and then you proceed with it. Yes, sir. Uh, so many patients of RK surgeries which have been multiple RK incisions and they have a iron deposition and a stellate lesions on the cornea and so many and any machines are not giving the keratometry readings then can you treat for the surface irregularity for the, so those patients and how yes. you can consider the keratometric value for those patients if i have a minute i can just show what we did yeah. I, I had a case but i didn't show because if of the can. time yeah just i'll show the pre-op and post-op we did have this challenge and reshma only helped us in this case she's here so this is what it can you I think just summarize it uh, yeah, as quickly as possible. This is just the pre and yeah. post up outcome. So this is what it was. It was an extremely flat cornea. You can see the keratometry was 27, the flat, and it doesn't. The, the the calculators don't take it up. So we did a surface regularization for this patient, and this was the post TCAT outcome, and that's when we proceeded with the uh, uh, cataract surgery.